Hi, I'm Alex from Bicycle Chain, and we're very fortunate to be at Specialised Headquarters today. I'm joined by Neon to discuss the all new Specialised Roubaix. I think, Neon, it's best to start, if you don't mind, talking about the evolution of the Roubaix over the years, because uh, I think that leads in nicely to why we've arrived at this new product. Sure thing. It's, um, well, I mean, this is the latest version. I mean, the Roubaix has been around a long time, as you're sure you know. Uh, and interestingly, it's, I mean, everyone's got an endurance bike at the moment, you know, but it never used to be the case. And the Roubaix itself was oh, over 10 years ago was the first iteration of the Roubaix. And you've seen it in a lot of different guises. I mean, there's been an aluminium Roubaix. There's been uh, Roubaix with Zerts, if you remember those, the, the rubber dampeners. And three years ago, we brought out something similar to this platform with uh, suspension at the front and uh, more of a movement at the back with the old seat post. And the Roubaix really was, Mike Sinyard, the, the, uh, our boss, came up with the concept of Roubaix and, and he called it a paradigm shift at the time. He, he said it was a real shift in performance. Performance historically was always about lightweight and about stiffness and he was the one that really saw the need for suspension and, and comfort increasing the performance of, of a bike and that's really why we're at where we're at now with i don't know the fifth or sixth or version of of the roubaix so it's been a long time coming it's got a long pedigree and we're the brand that's won the most paris roubaix which is where the name comes from um, six wins as well so it's got a great race heritage and what you're seeing now is the latest evolution of that platform with some, some key changes um, for the rider of today rather than of the rider of, of yesteryear. Okay, so you were touching briefly then on comfort being vitally important to speed. Yeah. Um, and obviously the Roubaix's motto, if you like, is smoother is faster. Do you, do you want to touch a bit on why, why that is? Because I think there's a, there's a a great deal of misconception in road bikes over what that really means. Does that, do you... Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. And I think, I think that is a key point. If you think about any performance machine that's out there, it has got suspension. In the bike world, we think of suspension or we think of mountain bikes, but we never think of road bikes really. But if you want to go the fastest, have the fastest ride you can have, you need the ultimate confidence. And if you want confidence in your bike, you want the ultimate in traction. And that's what suspension gives you. It gives you complete, 100% confidence. It gives you the traction to allow you to go as fast as you want. And to really, really push the boundaries of, of what is achievable on a road bike. As you push into the corners, the bike isn't skidding. The bike is sitting down. So you can really, really accelerate and get the maximum power you want out of the bike. And that is a, a, a very subtle change to all of the other sort of road bikes that are out there but a really key thing for Roubaix it isn't about comfort so you are having a softer ride and able to go longer and stay fresher it's about traction which allows you to really push the edge of what performance is, uh, is available in the platform I mean obviously that the comfortable for longer thing is an added bonus of course um, but yeah I think that's that's key and the, the the analogy used was the Formula One car. Uh, we wouldn't even contemplate Formula One without suspension, and it's you know we're talking about the same. No, same I mean it, if you think of um, any any performance machine out there, whether it's a you know a, a motorcycle on a track or a Formula One car on a track, if you don't have that suspension, you can't throw the car or the motorbike into the corners. We're used to seeing it on a rally car or on a, on a four-wheel drive vehicle. You know, you know suspension is to get over the bumps, but actually on a, on a racetrack, probably the smoothest surface out there, you need suspension, you need it to work. Otherwise, you cannot go around that hairpin at whatever speed they go around those hairpins. So the suspension is a really key thing. Okay, cool. So that leads on nicely, really, to the fact that the Roubaix is, or the new version is about speed. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you gone about, what are the changes and, and how have you gone about getting that with the new bike well there's there's a lot of things that we've we've uh, taken into account there is this um, idea that once a bike is built it's done you know you wash your hands and that's it put away but actually everything is is evolutionary you know our engineers our designers never stop working so 
When we hit production dates with a new platform, they're already busy working away trying to make things improve. And that's what you see here. You see the improvement um, from the platform that, that we historically had. So some subtle changes, but some subtle changes that we think are, are really significant. Um, at the front of the bike, you'll see that the Future Shock, which we developed with the last platform, is still there, but we've made some key changes to that. You've got uh, at the high end a 2.0 Future Shock, which gives you some hydraulic dampening. It actually gives you the ability to turn the suspension uh, and make it stiffer or make it more supple. So that gives the rider a lot more choice and a lot more control over how that bike is going to perform. And that, just staying on that briefly, so that came about through rider feedback as opposed to directly through rider feedback. Yeah, the the um, existing platform, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of movement there, and it's constantly moving for you. And sometimes in a ride, you might want that stiffer platform just to to really just grab hold of and really just push the boundaries. And that's why we adapted the, the Future Shock to allow that rider just to tune it for, I mean, your ride will be different to mine. Where you ride is gonna be different to where I ride, how you ride. And even, even different courses or different, um, different days of the week, I might choose that bike to perform in a different way. And that just gives you the rider more flexibility. So we've, we've got a new Future Shock and actually even in the lower models we've got um, a, an enhanced Future Shock from where we've been at the moment with a, a, um, a different spring rate and a more progressive top out and bottom out as far as the, the shock bumpers go. So every single model has got an improvement in its quality of ride. Okay. So the, just uh, so the dial on the higher end models, mm -hmm. is that, that you can use that on the fly? You can... You can Honestly, you could, let's say you are, you are a type of climber that's lightweight, wants to get out of the saddle, wants to throw the bike around and really push down on the bars, but you don't want that movement. Flip the dial, you're going to be gliding up that hill like the, with, a, with very little movement at all. Unless there's a big bump, we always want that, that shock to work if there's a big bump. So it's not a lockout, it just increases the stiffness. But if that's not your, it's not your bag and you're riding you know, on some really... Um, horrible roads or even sort of some gravel tracks. I mean, this bike is capable of taking a 33C tire now, so it's got a lot more uh, capability on, on the tire front, take you into places you might not normally have sort of ventured. And you can keep that dial turned off for that as well. So you can adjust it on the go, no problem at all. I mean, the, I think the bigger tire clearance is really interesting because this is a, you know, it's almost a bike for, or can be a bike for every occasion. You can it's going to be more than capable to race on it or or you could fit a nice chunky tire and, and get a little well, off the beaten track well i mean it will be raced it's going to be raced it, the 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 future shock itself in the old platform won last year's race so we were testing the the new shock last roubaix which obviously sagan won um so the bike will be raced and it'll be raced hard in in hard conditions but as you say with that tire capacity, it comes with a 28C, but with the ability to go up to a 33, yeah, you could ride it on some really nice different tracks. Um, so that's the, the future, and just because we will get asked in store, is that going to be backwards compatible? So the, the future shock isn't backwards compatible, so that's not just us being you know um, picky. You can't fit it because actually to get all of that extra technology in, the, the shaft itself is longer. So that okay. reason it, it won't go into an old model, the, you'd have to change forks as well as steer and then it, it just becomes more complicated. So no, it's not backwards compatible. So uh, that's the future shock at the front end. What other changes are, are fundamental this year? Well, just to make sure you, you understand that there's a need for a balanced ride, the, the rear end, although visually has changed, we don't have the CGR seat post anymore. You've now got a, a traditional D-shaped um, parve post. But we have built into that the same amount of, of flex and arc that we had in the old bike. So the performance is the same, but actually um, we're getting a much lighter seat post, 70 gram lighter in the seat post. So that, that helps as far as the whole system goes. In addition to that, there's been an awful lot of concentration on the frame. I mean, there, there may be subtle to your eyes, but there's been a lot of work to increase the stiffness of the frame. Because we've got that suspension, it means that we're able to build in a much stiffer platform for you to push against. If you imagine that thing can stay rigid, 
whilst the suspension is working for you. So that's a, that's a great enhancement. But also, more importantly, aerodynamics was never an issue for the first bike. We didn't even take it into consideration. But now racers want aero. It's part of our DNA. It's part of what is required. So this bike has now been built with the same aerodynamic profiles as we have in our tarmac. So we're talking about a sub thousand gram um, bike frame weight with the aerodynamic features of a tarmac and capability of a 33C tire. So this bike can do it all in all honesty. It's phenomenal. You touched on the aesthetics of the bike there. And I think whilst, whilst beauty is subjective, possibly one of the criticisms of the older model was some of the aesthetic features. Uh, and this is definitely a, it's a racier looking, cleaner looking machine. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah we've got, well, we, we've got a few things. I, I think the, the design ethos as far as getting the aerodynamics, aerodynamics happens to look good. It's a, it's a, a payoff. So we have had more time to engineer the bike to make sure the bike was as fast as it could be. So you have a much sleeker front end. Uh, you've got a, a larger lower bearing here, which gives the, the front end more purpose. The uh, seat tube you'll see has got an aero profile at the top and the CGR moving to a traditional looking seat post again really adds to that sort of stealthy racy look. Um, so there's a few different elements that I think all together make the bike just look faster, look sleeker. Yeah, I think you're right. They are subtle or you think they are. And then we were looking at the older model earlier and it's really... Yeah, a massive, massive jump forward. Mm -hmm. And also the boot on the Future Shop, small as it is. Uh, and the stem you were saying is, is all designed now to continue that. Yeah, so the, the, the stem um, is, a, is a specific piece. It's not unique, you can put any stem you want on there, but the stem has been designed to, to make the front end look nicer. The boot, the little rubber section that sits beneath the stem, that's now smooth lines rather than the concertina look that we had before. Funnily enough, it's these small things that take up a lot of energy and a lot of time, but we got there. Um, so that front end does look sleeker. Uh, yeah, and the, the, the fact that the frame no longer has external seat post bolts, you know, the seat post clamp has moved to be within the frame rather than external. So again, that really tidies up, cleans up the back end of the bike. And this is still using the same principle of the, fundamentally the seat is, is out of the frame from Correct. The stays, yeah. Correct, and, and yeah. So, so we, it's a 65 millimeter drop um, from where the, the seat post is clamped. So although when you look at it, it just looks like a traditional seat post into a frame, the clamp is 65 mil lower into the frame that gives the arc of the seat post and, and gives that balanced ride from front to rear. Having a, a, a balanced ride really is noticeable as a rider. If you have a stiff back end, but a, a, a front end that's moving, it, it just doesn't feel quite right. Um, as you can imagine, you know, it's, it's, it's just not giving that, that um, feeling of being at one with the bike. So having that arc really makes a big difference. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I've ridden other bikes where they've been, maybe it's as, as, as a compliant a front end, but the back end is far more or far less. And it, mm. it is so, yeah, that feeling of, of cushion being balanced is critical with a bike like this. Yeah. So that, with that, um, that change from the, from the visual aesthetic, in, as well as that, we've only got um, disc brake bikes, um, not that unusual now, but you know, the, all Roubaix's are disc brake, as you'd expect. And then the other change that we've made this year is that all frames are now, it, from the top to the bottom, are all threaded bottom brackets. So there's a change there. Um, high end last year, we had OSBBs, and now we're threaded all the way through. So. And that's purely from a, a servicing yeah, and function people want that. Yeah. So, you know, there's been enough changes with, uh, with, with both uh, Shimano and SRAM that we can offer that platform threaded from top to bottom. Uh, so I understand there's been a change to the lineup this year and you're moving away from Ruby. Correct, yeah. So when the uh, Ruby and Roubaix were last re-engineered, um, the Diverge family was, was, well, in its latest iteration, didn't even exist. So... Now that family is well established and offers a, a different geometry to the Roubaix. We have amalgamated the Ruby and, to, and the Roubaix into one platform. So it's a, a gender neutral platform, if you like. Um, and that's great because women actually haven't had this bike to ride. 
the ruby was never a female version of a roubaix. It had a different yeah. geometry, had a different ride feel. Now, the roubaix is the endurance bike um, that helps women and men. So that's, the ruby is no longer needed. If someone wants that more relaxed geometry or wants that bike to ride off road, um, be a bit more high, be higher up in the front end, then the diverge exists for that rider, both male and female. So, okay. yeah. So this is now available from a, a 44 centimeter all the way through to, in some models, a 64. So it's a huge range of sizes. So for those that aren't familiar with the Roubaix, Neon, can you tell us where it fits into specialized road range? Yeah, quite comfortably, I would, I would say this is our endurance road bike. This is um, really for someone who is more interested in the distance um, and, and everything that might be required for that experience. That could mean that comfort is the most important thing, but actually with this new bike, it could also be that speed is the most important thing. Not something that you would, never, you would necessarily sort of equate historically with uh, the Roubaix because comfort didn't historically mean speed. But when you dig into the, the, the technology, you realize how comfort does equate to speed. Being more comfortable on the bike gives you more traction, gives you more speed, and that's the, that's the win, if you like, for the, for the rider. So still an endurance bike, but this has the same uh, geo as our tarmac. And if you want to talk about um, frame geometry, that means it also has the same geometry as the Venge. So you have three platforms, but the rider experience is very different from an aero road bike all the way through to an endurance road bike. And what makes it different is going to be the, the sum pieces that make up that, uh, that jigsaw, whether it's the Future Shock, the Parve post, uh, the aerodynamics and the compliance that's built into the ride. So there's a lot of a lot to take into consideration. And that's the interesting bit with this bike is that it's got, I think, the punch of, of the other bikes, but you can have the fun aspect thrown in with the with the, the other features of the bike. Yeah, I mean, it, in, in this industry, we often talk about um, the car industry because it's something that people understand. And none of us would want to drive a Formula One car to Sainsbury's. It's not going to be a good ride, you know. It's the roads are hard, and you're going to feel it at every single every single bump, and it's probably not going to be very quick. Sleeping policemen and, and potholes don't make that uh, that car an easy one to drive. And in the same world, you might not want to ride a Venge or a or a time trial bike, let's say, or a triathlon bike, on the same courses or the same routes as you would something like this. This could probably would be faster and certainly more enjoyable. It doesn't mean the performance is any less. It actually means the performance is probably better suited for that rider. So we will see professional riders choose to ride this bike, not just in Paris-Roubaix, which is obviously what it's designed for, but actually in a whole heap of, of uh, multiple day races or single day races. It isn't just your pigeonhole one day a year. So massive thanks to Neon for talking us through the new bike. They're in store now, so you can come and take a look. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>